Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the sons of God, that we should be called the sons of God and daughters of God. Oh yes, what manner of love is this? And we will be reading that beautiful, beautiful passage today in 1 John, the little epistle, 1 John, chapter 3. 1 John, chapter 3, on this December 2. December 2, and I welcome you, each and every one of you, to the reading of the Word of God. Nothing more important. Nothing more important, but you have to fight, don't you, in this day and age to keep the time open, the concentration. As we will read here, this is what Daniel did. We are going to read a chapter here in Daniel chapter 9 that is such an example for us. I pray that every word about what Daniel does here is an inspiration to you. I pray it's an inspiration to you, and I welcome each and every one of you dear, precious friends. Oh, I love you so. All right, on this chilly little December morning, Daniel 9, in the first year of Darius, we have moved ahead now to a new king has come in. Yesterday we read about Belshazzar, and now we have the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books. Oh, he's had his nose in the books. Praise the Lord. I understood. Okay. By the books, the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah, the prophet, Yarmiyahu, remember him? So here he is, he is studying the prophets that have gone before him to find out that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And we know that that's exactly what happened right down to the very day. And then here, this, this, Verse right here, this has inspired me yesterday and this morning, and I pray that it does you. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Now, what does that suggest for us? I set my face. When you set your face towards something, you put all your attention on it, don't you? You concentrate on it. You are not letting distractions draw you away, okay? No distractions. You're keeping that thing, whatever you're concentrating on, the most important. And so here's Daniel. He said he set my face. He made up his mind, made up his mind to set his face toward the Lord to make request by prayer and supplications, and we can too. And if we're smart, we'll put some fasting with it. And when it says here, sackcloth, he humbled himself. He didn't put on his best clothes. He put on sackcloth and let people look at him disgustedly and say, what in the world is going on here? Or some such thought. And he prayed to the Lord my God and made confession. There we go and said, O oh Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned. So he starts off with what we ought to always start off with, 
repentance. And, and let's do that. Let us have this morning, today, a heart and a mindset of repentance. We have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, to our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O oh, Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us, shame of face, as it is this day, to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all of Israel, to those near and those far off in all the countries like America, to which you have driven them because of the unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. Now, this is where... <clears throat> Daniel's attention is after he read out of the books and read that Jeremiah said they'll be gone 70 years. God will not let them return until 70 years has passed. Oh Lord, to us belongs shame face to our kings, our princes, and our fathers because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. And you know, sometimes we're walking by faith now, aren't we? We're walking by grace. In the age of grace, we are post-crucifixion and resurrection. But he has not dropped his laws, Jesus came and did a lot of fulfilling, didn't he? And so we need to review what are the laws. We need to go over those Ten Commandments and then be honest, don't we? We need to be honest and say, well, Jane, how are you doing with those? Are you slipping a little? And you can always find some place that you want to go, whoops, better toughen that up, okay? Because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yes, all Israel has transgressed your law and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the law of Moshe, Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against him. I mean, it's always, it always points back to that, doesn't it? Our disobedience, our sin. And he has confirmed his words which he spoke against us and against our judges who judged us by bringing upon us a great disaster. I mean, would you call COVID a great disaster? Oh, and well planned and paid for by deceitful people. A great disaster. Well, God allowed it, didn't he? For under the whole heaven, such has never been done as what has been done to Jerusalem. And how true. You read the history of Jerusalem over and over and over. Torn down, warred against, people trying to conquer. As it is written in the law of Moshe, all this disaster has come upon us. Yet, we have not made our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand your truth. Therefore, the Lord has kept the disaster in mind and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous 
in all the works which he does, though we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made yourself a name as it is this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. And Lord, all of us that are here right now, we want to repent. We want to repent for bad thoughts, maybe bad words, bad choices, things that we've left undone, that we could have done, people we could have gone to see or given a call or done something, sent a card. Let's, let's get into all that. It's the, t it's the season, right? Oh, Lord, according to all your righteousness, I pray, let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people are a reproach to all those around us. And oh, that's so, so true today, isn't it? I mean, there's more hatred that is tried to be directed and poured out on the Jewish people. It just goes on. But one day, one day, it will all be turned around, won't it? And we're starting to see that. We're starting to see little glimpses of light in the darkness. Okay, now therefore, our God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications. And for the Lord's sake, cause your face to shine on your sanctuary, which is desolate. Oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great mercies. That's why we do it, isn't it? Because he's so faithful to us. Oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. Oh, Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. All of that pouring out of Daniel. And we should let stuff like that, words like that, setting our face toward him, pour out. Just pour it out. So many people today just all bottled up. They just got it all bottled up and their heart gets hard because of it. All right, let's move right along to verse 20. Now, while I was speaking, get this, you talk about a quick answer shot down from heaven. While I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, how would you like to be praying? I wish it would happen. I would love it. And suddenly, an angel from heaven, and we're talking Gabriel, we're talking top angel here, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. Oh my goodness. Wouldn't you love that said to you? Well, I have news for you. It just was said to you and to me. That's the beauty of having God's word. We can read it, what happened a long time ago, and it's fresh for today, isn't it? It's fresh. At the beginning of your supplications, 
the command went out. Got that? His supplications were heard and a command went out. Gabriel, go out. Go to Daniel. And I have come to tell you, for you are greatly loved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most High. Oh my goodness. I have that. That's all one sentence. And I have that. I have drawn a square box around that. So it jumps out at me. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome times. How about that? <clears throat> it's going to be built, but they're not going to wait for peace. God's going to set a time and it's going to be troublesome, but you're going to get it done. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. Really? We're talking about the cross? What's going on here? Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood until the end of the war desolations are determined. And then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. Oh, okay. Even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. Wow. And we move along to chapter 10. Tap chapter 10. And we're going to move along here because we're moving to another king. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. And he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of apas. His body was like pearl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude wow picture that a voice speaking that every word sounded like a multitude was speaking all at once 
And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision. How about that? But a great terror fell upon them. I guess so. They're watching Daniel react to this vision and they're going, what's going on? And guess what they did? So that they fled to hide themselves. <laughs> they said, we're getting out of here. Let me hide. Therefore, I was left alone when I saw this great vision and no strength remained in me for my vigor was turned to frailty in me and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. Suddenly, a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright for I have now been sent to you. And while he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. And then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. Oh, isn't that encouraging? All of his words of prayer were heard. And I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Imagine this. He had to fight his way to be able to come. And behold, Michael, Michel, one of the chief princes, came to help me for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. Oh, we're talking about latter days. We're talking about now. How do we know these are the latter days? Because the people have returned to Israel is the biggest one. There are a lot of signs. But woo, for me, that's the biggest one. It's a nation again. That what will happen to your people in the latter days for the vision refers to many days yet to come. And when he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly, one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips, and then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision of my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. I mean, that picture that. Have you ever had that time, and particularly a time when suddenly a spirit of fear gripped you so hard, you didn't even think you could breathe? I've had that happen. And then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Isn't that beautiful? How many times has, has he had the blessing of hearing a heavenly creature, an angel, say, greatly beloved, fear not. 
Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened, and I said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Have you done that lately for someone? Someone who might be really down and spoken great and wonderful words of encouragement, and you just, it was like you just saw the life return. Have you had that happen to you? I have so many times. So many great and wonderful friends and relatives have spoken, or sometimes they don't even know it, and I don't even speak. I just let it happen, but it strengthens me. And then he said, do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against these except Michiel, Michael, your prince. Wow, what a message, y'all. I hope you're taking this in. I hope Holy Ghost is working with you to bring revelation to you. And so we just start, we end today by just starting chapter 11, 11, 1. Also in the first year of Darius the Mede, I, even I, stood up to confirm and strengthen him. How about that? God had a mission for him, didn't he? Go strengthen. Let's be strengtheners, you and I. All right, we move right along to 1 John, the epistle, not the gospel, but the little epistle letter of 1 John, chapter 2, picking up with verse 18. Picking up with 18. Little children, it is the last hour. Now, just think of that. Here's John, way back generations from us now, and he is declaring that it's the last hour. So what hour is it for us? Getting down to be the last of the last, isn't it? And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. There you go. There's the word of God saying it for us. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Oh, it happens, doesn't it? But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Oh, are you getting this? This is so rich. And this is the promise that he has promised us. Eternal life. Eternal life. 
We don't have to fear a day of death coming if we are in Jesus Christ. He has promised us eternal life. So let's walk very upright. Let's walk in him, in his words, in his ways. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little to children, abide in him that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. That's how you can tell, right? And we move right along to chapter 3 of First John. And these are the words I started out singing. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Oh, yes. Bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Oh, y'all, sweet brothers and sisters, do you desire, do you desire to purify yourself from all of your selfish ways, from all of our laziness, from all of our condemnation and the way we look at other people, when we should be praying for people and desiring to see them come into the kingdom. We don't want anyone to go to hell. And neither does the Lord. So we must, as the body of Christ, take this beautiful epistle so seriously and purify ourselves, just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is is lawlessness and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him there is no sin whoever abides in him does not sin whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him those people are kidding themselves aren't they and it can happen to us all too quickly. So praise God, we are reading this like it's our life depends upon us because it does. Our life depends upon our faith and belief in the Word of God, in Jesus. He is alive on every page. All right, y'all, let's move right along to Psalm 121. Psalm 121, and this is the second one that is called a song of ascents, ascents, to ascend, to go up, okay? I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. 
He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Oh my goodness, what a wonderful song. I am encouraged and I pray you are too. And we wrap up today's reading, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 28, picking up with verse 27. Proverbs 28, verse 27. He who gives to the poor will not lack. But he who hides his eyes will have many curses. I mean, just get a hold of that statement. He who gives to the poor will not lack. You can't outgive God. But he who hides his eyes will have many curses. When the wicked arise, Men hide themselves, <clears throat> but when they perish, the righteous increase. The righteous increase. Oh my, that is our prayer, isn't it? That the wicked are exposed. They are put down. They are put to shame. And you know when that happens, they can be brought to the Lord. As long as they're walking in their own pride, they refuse it. But when things get tough on their life, just like you and me, I came at a time when I didn't even want to live. I thought about suicide every day. And I was young, four of children, a lot to live for, but the Lord used all of that. And they're the best 50 out of my 82 by far. Let's pray. Father God, how we bless you today. Oh, Father, you have, you have caused us to, to be rested in the night. You have caused us, many of us, to wake up and to spend precious time with you. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, we thank you for your word, that it's in our hands. We can pick it up, we can read it, we can share it, we can meditate on it, we can memorize it, we can fill our souls and our spirits with your word. Thank you so much. Thank you for fulfilling the word, precious Jesus. Thank you for going to the cross for each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the pain you suffered as all of our sin was put upon you. I can't even imagine. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit that you are here with us. You are the restrainer on earth. And you live in us when we ask, when we repent, and when we come to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are our precious, precious partner of the Trinity, living in us, helping us, directing us, comforting us from deaths and hard times and sicknesses and bringing us out of sin. Thank you, Lord. We hold up Israel, Lord, and we'd ask that 
you would keep drawing your people. You would keep bringing them back. You are, <clears throat> you are causing them to get on planes and boats and whatever and come back home. Come back to the land. Come back to Jerusalem. The words that they say every year in their festival, next year in Jerusalem, it has now become a reality. Thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to live to see this, this great end-time prophecy fulfilled. Bless them, precious Lord, and let there be peace in Jerusalem. I hold up America, Lord, and, and as I hold up America, the rest of you hold up, hold up your country. Hold up Kenya, Jeffrey. Hold her up. Hold her up. Your rulership. Father God, we'd ask, Lord, that all that is happening in America and in Kenya and in all the other nations, that all of it is used, good and bad, to draw people unto you, to build up the body of Christ, to bring to salvation all who would listen and come. Please, precious Lord, we thank you for it, Lord. We are asking that you bring healing to those friends and relatives who we know are ill. Bring healing, Lord. Answer the prayers spoken on their behalf. Let people with COVID get back up and be healed and go on with their life. We come against this fear that has been brought forth against all the people of the world, that they would be paralyzed with fear, that they would die. We rebuke this in Jesus' name. We come against every attack. You spirit of fear, we bind you in the name of Jesus. And we say, loose the people of God, that they might work hard, that they might carry on with works in the church. They might <clears throat> set their face like we read, put their concentration on your body, Lord, building up your body, bringing every last person that can be brought praying with them, encouraging them, causing them to grow more every day. Lord, I'm asking that you answer the prayers and the petitions of your sons and daughters here right now and who will watch the, this word later in the day or the night. Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. We thank you, Lord. We'd ask now that you would guide us through this beautiful brand new day you've given us, December 2. And to all of that, we can cry a hearty amen and amen. Bye-bye.